Okay, well, moving on to our next story, do you want to talk about Palm Springs Surf Club or get a uh, Tools to Live By call? Let's go Tools to Live By, then Palm Springs. Okay, let me pull up the share screen. This one's a real dilemma that this guy has gotten himself into. I feel that he's come to the right place. I do too, but I feel sorry for him as well. Volume up. East side of Oahu calling in. This is Chad Mellon on the east side of Oahu calling in to the grit. Hoping to get some good advice on a quite the pickle I got myself into. Uh, yesterday in the finals of Pipe Masters, me and my buddy uh, cut out of work. He's in from uh, California. It's in Maui, got a sweet KT surfboard. Got the carbon wrap on it, all the all the fancy new deals, and uh, went up to the North Shore. We uh, had a great time, kind of maxed out Rocky Point. At a certain point, he said, hey, let's, let's switch boards. You know, I want you to try this new board, give me a little feedback. I was a little hesitant just because of how big it was, but he was like, all right, you know, we'll switch. We never had a real conversation, though, you know, like, if I break this board, we're paying, you know, any of that. I was just, back of my mind, a little worried about that, you know, I was thinking about maybe breaking boards. So, I get one sweet little wave, super fun wave. Uh, somehow, the set that stayed open didn't close out. Uh, paddling back out, a real big just close out came through, nowhere to go. See the lips coming right down from my head. Ditch the board, swim down, grab a coral head, hang on. I uh, hear the sound of just shattering glass. Sounds like the carbon breaking and come back up, half a board, 15 minutes swim in, and uh, there I am. So some advice on that would be great. Thank you very much. Keep up the work. Aloha. He didn't pose a question, but I presume he's asking what to whether, do, whether he should compensate his buddy or how do you handle that? I got this David Lee scales all day, every day. Good. This is no problem for me right here. Is it a problem for you? It's a delicate situation with a buddy like that. It's a brand new board. And, the, and the other thing is in the past, I'd be like, oh, you got to compensate your buddy. But surfboards now, a short board like that with the carbon, it could be a thousand dollars. I know, but... I'll say this, boards and children were made to be broken, David Lee Scales, <laughs> is if you send your kid over to somebody's house for a play date, if you send young Austin over and Austin falls down and bonks his chin and needs to get stitches, do you hold the person liable that you sent him over to? I guess not, no. You, you don't. You're a jackass if you do that, right? You could, but you were a rude, rude person. Accidents happen. And that's just life. Like, could happen to you, could happen to me. Tough beans. Sorry about it. If his friend is a good friend, of course, that sucks. You lost your board, right? But it could have been you doing it anyway. Uh, like, things come, things go. You don't blame others, especially when it comes to boards or kids or cars. If you let your buddy drive your car and he gets in a fender bender, uh, what is okay if you let him drive your car like that's what happens right yeah like there's holding people to account for things we'd all be a lot better and i don't believe in karma david lee scales as you know but i do believe in the not that what goes around comes around but it's just like and i know it never works out right like somebody uh drove smack my truck was parked on the street the other day uh, somebody smacked into it, uh, left a note, a kind note that was like, I am so, so, so sorry. Whatever you need, here's my number, right? And I texted straight away, don't stink and worry about it, right? Knowing that that's never going to, like, I do that to somebody and the person's going to say, I, I did that to somebody and they tried to wring my neck for like as much money as they could get out. Uh, so it's not like you're expecting, but I just feel if we all, hey man, my thing gets broken today, your thing gets broken tomorrow, we all just move on. I think this guy has no, 
you, you know, you could be really sorry. You could like say if you have an extra board in your quiver that he could use in the meantime, whatever. But I think you were, it sets a bad precedent, in fact, to, to attempt to pay for it. It makes it seem like you did something wrong. I totally agree with you now that you say it and walk me through it. And I do feel the same way. I felt that way even before addressing this. I was going to try to give a diplomatic answer, I guess, and say like, you should definitely offer to pay, but you're right in my heart. Or when I think about with my best of friends, there would be zero question, zero obligation to pay or make it right. If you are going to let them borrow your board, it's in, it's just um, accepted that totally. this is a friendship and yeah, I want to try things board. You want to try my new boards whenever you want. Yeah. And things happen. The only question that comes in is, you know, the analogy of letting your friend borrow your car and then they get a, they crash it. Are they a drunk driver? Like, are they a problematic driver? Mm -hmm. But if that were the case, it's on you for even handing them the keys. Precisely. And recklessness, I feel like disregard for the thing that's being used can be a caveat right like if they say hey give me your car man and you give it to them and but they're like untrustworthy to begin with and then they go out to the desert and crash into a boulder because they're ripping donuts you know that's still on you there but this recklessness but and so if friend here if our hawaiian friend was out like hey oh can i borrow your board i want to go surf like mason ho for a minute i want right. to go pack a rock barrel then like again you're dumb for giving you your board if he was being reckless but this right here a closeout on a bigger day where due to surfing it's not like this guy said hey can i borrow your board and then went and paddled out on a bigger day yeah. dude was out there he knew the size he knew everything we all know risk we all know like expected outcomes and especially to hold somebody for to account for somebody that was like none of their doing I, again, I think it just sets a bad precedent. I think grace and like stuff happens, man. Like, yeah. and the well, person who bought it lumps the cost. I was thinking in advance that the right thing to do is to offer to pay for the board. And then the right thing to do for the buddy is to decline. But I'm going to wash that away and yep. say instead, the right thing to do is to not not extend not offer anything at all just to be like we're, we're buddies but if the buddy whose board is now broken does expect some sort of compensation that's where you have to reevaluate the friendship uh, and precisely if, if he does you're ob obliged at that point to be like i guess i got to make this right but this forever changes the trajectory of our relationship totally i thought we were buddies but now you're going to nickel and dime me shoots i, I guess I we're see not I see this as a transactional kind of thing and yeah. whatever, right? Like, yeah, definitely don't be flippant about when the board gets broken, like, oh, it sucks to be you. Your board is broken now, right? Like, I'm so sorry, right? And if you have an extra board or if you can, of course, like a gesture is a gesture, uh, but pay, like offering to split it or whatever is, again, bad precedent. You don't want to set yeah. that precedent in a friendship. Friendship is about both, absorbing loss and having others absorb your loss, right? Like this is part of what friendship is. Yep. Completely. Yeah. I fully agree. Well, we've forgot to mention at the opening of that segment, but Veyer watches is who brings us tools to live by because they're the ultimate tool in our lives. We don't need any electricity to charge it. We don't get text messages on it. It is an old school analog Veyer watch, V-A-E-R, watches.com. 20% off their website through the holidays. So forget about our promo code that we used to get you 15% off with. Get the 20% off on VeyerWatches.com right now. And I'm telling you, everybody knows this. Like this time, it's crunch time for gift giving right now. It is like shipping. You're like running up to some real proper barriers here. Uh, nobody, not one man in your life will be bummed to get a watch not only will they not be bummed this will be the gift that they remember and actually use for the rest of the year completely it is a timeless gift actually i mean it's like it's classy it shows thoughtfulness it shows yeah. intention american constructed it's a perfect gift 
It really is. And by the way, seriously, getting text messages on your watch has to be, I mean, that is the definition of hell for me. I see people with Apple watches and I think, what in the world are you doing? Not only, not only are you getting text messages on your watch, your wrist vibrating, you've got to plug your watch in at night or your watch is not going to work. Crazy. I can leave my stinking veil. I don't do anything with it. I wear it. I know. And then it gets charged with the sun. That's I know. It. As if we're not getting, you know, notified and pinged constantly. Like we all need distance from our phone, but then you're going to strap it to your wrist for additional notifications. Insane.